every time I lift up my hands, yeah. Lord, I gotta say thank you, thank you. Come on, say it. And every time I lift up my voice, Lord, I say thank you. Thank you, oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Say thank you.
Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. This is Ambassador L.F. Craig of the Shelter God Safe House and in the know for new life. This is another start of a week. This is Monday. And we are here for our praise and our word. 
I pray that you had a blessed weekend and everything is going good with you. Yes, we are here to continue our chunk and our chew. And what we did last week, we will continue. We started reading the book of Hebrews and we read the first four chapters. We're going to be reading chapters five, six, and seven uh, this week. And so we just want to give you something that is a seed and water, okay? It's part of it's planting the seed, the other waters it, and so that you can grow. And we ask that you would go and read, uh, just read it. Even if you can't understand it, are you trying to figure out, well, what do it all means? Because in Hebrews is where we find our covenant with God, the new covenant. And so we uh, get in depth with that after we read through it. I give you, and while I'm reading through it, I throw out a few little nuggets, but we may get in depth after we get through with all 13 chapters. But right now we just add, because we want to have something inside of us that gives the Holy Spirit something to draw off of. And so what I want to do is just continue to encourage you to get in the written word and as the spirit of the word, to strengthen your understanding that your spiritual understanding and the spiritual wisdom will connect together that you can become and start operating from a mature standpoint that you can handle the things that God has for you. Okay, uh, We talk about a, trust, a trustee. You know, if you're a child, somebody's put over your affairs and you can't get that until you grow up or mature or age into it. And we know that in the spiritual walk, it's not about your age as far as your birthday age, but it's for as you become mature in allowing the spirit of God to reveal to you the truth of God's word. And so, because we have so many different uh theologies, uh, theories uh, that we have to deal with. Uh, if you've been in the church and grew up in the church, you have a lot of old thinking, obsolete. They believed up to the point that they could believe. Uh, but God is revealing to us that this grace that we talk about is extended to everyone. And the grace of God, oh man, if once you begin to experience it, it's something about his grace and his favor on your life. You want to please him. You want to please him. And I believe it, uh, I'm trying to think of the musician uh, that wrote the song, Falling in Love with Jesus uh, was the best thing I ever done. And once you really begin to understand what he really did, you know, we just coming out of the Easter season, we're going into, uh, we're going into Pentecost, the, the 50 days uh, of walking of Jesus, walking in the earth for the 40 days, and then the 10 days of tearing in the upper room. So we are in that cycle of Christian calendar events. And so, uh, and while we're going through that, the, the Spirit of God just so fixed it that we're going to be looking at this covenant, this new covenant that we have because Christ has risen. Christ has risen and has made salvation available. The, the, the plan of God has been revealed. And so we're going to be looking at chapter number five today. And so we're just going to read that, read down through it. It's a, it's a short chapter. It, it may be a lot for some people to chunk and chew on, but come back and replay it. Okay. Hebrews chapter five, and we'll be reading from the Message Bible. Every high priest selected to represent men and women before God offer sacrifice for their sins should be able to deal gently with their failings since he knows 
what it's like from his own experience. But that also means that he has to offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as the people's. And so this is just saying, you know, those that are in leadership, no one elects himself to this honored position. He's called to it by God as Aaron was. Neither did Christ presume to set himself up as high priest, but was set apart by the one who said to him, you're my son, today I'll celebrate you. In another place, God declares, you're a priest forever in the royal order of Melchizedek. And we're gonna talk about that priest later in one of the other chapters. While he lived on earth and anticipating death, Jesus cried out in pain and wept and wept in sorrow as he offered up priestly prayers to God. And this talks about if you go and look at John, the 17th chapter, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, that was him giving his priestly prayers up to God. John, the 17th chapter, is actually the Lord's Prayer, where he's praying to God. This is what took place in the Garden of Gethsemane, where it said that he prayed until blood like sweat fell from drops of blood like sweat fell from his bra, bra. And, and he has he hadn't went to the cross he, had, he hadn't even been to the judgment but he prayed so that his his body uh dripped with heavy sweat uh i don't know how they ended up writing but maybe he looked this you know how you look if you've been exercising and then you come back and you just sweaty all over that's the way they had to be able to realize it to write it uh simply because the three that he took with him those further in they fell asleep so because he honored god god answered him though he was god's son he learned trusting obedience by what he suffered just as we do then having arrived at the full stature of his maturity and having been announced by God as high priest in the order of Melchizedek, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who believingly obey him. This is the key. Those of us that believingly obey him, that trust him, you have to believe God because you will not allow God to walk with you. You will not allow the spirit of God to speak to you if you don't believe. And not you can't believe in yourself. You have to believe in God. I have a lot more to say about this, but it is hard to get it across to you since you picked up this bad habit of not listening. Oh man, see, it, it's not just in today. It has always been. There is so much uh, in the Word of God. And we don't really have time to really dig into it, to really build on the foundation because we have a habit of not listening and we get bored real quick. Our attention span is real low unless it's a movie or a football game or something that we want. But, you know, and, and I think in myself sometimes because I'm, I'm long winded, I can preach and teach a long time. I try to keep it real short and I get to thinking, well, some of us really wouldn't have been followers of Jesus because Jesus could teach from morning to the evening and people would just sit and listen to him. Uh, Paul uh, preached uh, one time so long to, to a boy fell asleep into a deep sleep. And because he fell into a deep sleep, fell over, uh, he was sitting by a window, fell out of it. Uh, but if you preach more than 30, 45 minutes, people look like, hey, you know, that's enough of that. But, uh, <laughs> all right. And I probably went over my time too. But we're going to have to get, and I, and I think we get into to a time that, you're really going to have to figure out if you really want to have this relationship with God. Do you really want to be in relationship with him? Because it requires spending time. And I'm not talking about being at church all day. I mean, it, it, it requires spending time 
time with him, time with the spirit talking with you, time with reading the word, time to listening to the word being rightly divided. By this time, you ought to be teachers yourself. Yet here I find you need someone to sit down with you and go over the basics on God again, starting from square one, baby's milk, when you should have been on solid food long ago. And this is just a point I put up here. We must grow up so to get what is truly ours. Milk is for beginners, inexperienced in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. Solid food is for those who have practice in discerning the will of God in your life. And so this is our chunk and our chew for this Monday. I pray that God will continue to bless your life, continue to lead you and direct you in his path. I am so blessed to be So praise God for his goodness and his grace and his mercy. We are thankful for the long suffering that God has toward us. Remember, you are gifted and fruited. The fruit of the spirit has been deposited in you. That seed of the fruit of the spirit has been deposited in you. And you should be producing those fruits. And also he has given you a gift. He put a gift down in the earthen vessel that the ecclesia may be of God, the, 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 the glory from your fruit, the glory from your gift to the world goes to God. And so I give him praise and glory for using me at this time in this season. God bless you. Have a wonderful rest of your Monday. Me close to you. Never let me go.
in 
be 